Dirk steps into full-on hero mode as he finds the Rowdy Three, rescues Todd and Amanda from a Dengdemore execution, and clues everybody in with his full-out I solved the case detective speech. Now, if you can only figure out what to do about that Susie girl. Also, note to self, do not get executed by the Dengdemores. <laughs> it's Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Season 2, Episode 8. Little guy, black hair. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. So yeah, we'll be diving into spoiler territory. Alright, so a lot of stuff. Wow, a lot of stuff happening today. Everything is connected. Definitely all coming together. Uh, we have Dirk with renewed confidence now that he has solved the case. Really, like I said, stepping into hero mode. Really empowered. I mean, throughout the episode of these, you know, uh, doing this great quick change, which was just hilarious. Okay, maybe not the best disguise artist and horrible with accents, but he fits in well. Uh, but between that and hiding on the roof and spotting out what Todd and Amanda are and Okay, maybe a bit running away from the beast, but can't totally blame him. Uh, even punching Martin. Maybe a bit of a mistake, but still. He has stepped into his boat, had the plan to do the rescue. It was definitely a full Dirk day, and, it's, and it should be. It should be Dirk's day. He has solved the case. He is empowered. Everybody is around him. So it was just a beautiful whole arc of story. And really a lot of coming togethers uh, uh, in this episode. So I'm actually not going to start things off with Dirk here. I'm going to start things off with Todd and Amanda. Uh, because in this episode is really the first time that they have had to connect for the entire season. And there's a lot of emotion that went on and I, I really appreciated the whole little arc that they had going on, starting off with Amanda still being upset uh, with Todd um, and their whole little fight there, to the story of the pararibulitis that starts opening things up, and then what I'm pretty much going to call the scene of the week this week, I'll say it right now, scene of the week, uh, which is the whole hit me scene. Um, and then, of course, we follow up with the, the, the rescue, with the, the, the execution bit. But let's focus for a moment on that hit me scene. And the reason I'm calling out that scene of the week this week is because there was so much depth to it. There were so many highs, there were so many lows. It was the most family feel that we've got to have out of these two characters. There were joyful moments. There were introspective moments. There was maybe steps towards forgiveness. Uh, considering how much of their, they were kind of butting heads at the end of last episode. I love the whole pacing, the whole structure of this particular sequence, because it starts off with the pararibulitis, you know, the thing that they share. And it lets you know the first symptoms, you know, the first times he felt it, it came down, however you want to describe it, was on the phone call with her when she called, and he saw that as sort of a sign. And then we get into the more comical. You can't take those pills here. Pararibulitis does something different in Wendemore. We could use it to escape. Uh, to feeding back how, because of the bit of immunity that she has built up to her symptoms from her travels with Vogel and trying to induce the visions, how they've got to sort of start a little, little back and forth there, try and stimulate it, hit me, do something like that, which just brings up, again, this is the family stuff. We have what connects us. Then we have the little sibling violence, which always happens. Then we have the joy of it, the connection to the trip to Orlando. That lets all of their guards down. So afterwards, they can really connect. And she can really just be honest about, I miss my brother. I miss my family. I don't know if we can get back to things. You were my hero. And, and you, you hurt me. And for Todd's part, even just saying, look, I know. And I, and I am trying. You know... It is. He may not know the best way to do things, but he's trying. So because of that whole arc that happened, even just in that one scene, mad to family, connections, joy, uh, 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 peace, and then 
like I said, even a little bit of forgiveness happening. Uh, I just thought that it was a perfect scene with them really encapsulating their relationship, bringing it to its best point, and giving us to a point where they can sort of bond and get ready to move forward, especially sharing their little twin one-finger salutes to the Dengdemores. And who else is in a bit of a forgiving mood, or apologetic at least, uh, would be Dirk, especially running into the Rowdy Three uh, and Beast. Um, Beast is cute. I, I appreciate at least Dirk apologizing to Beast, trying to, to, to make a little connection there. Maybe he doesn't want to be the boyfriend, but she's still kind of there for him right now. Useful, certainly, in a big rescue attempt, uh, which was just... Awesome. Uh, one, I love how as soon as he comes up with a plan, the Rowdy Three are right with him. He is suddenly their boss, which I thought was just great. Martin is awesome. Um, and of course, the truck that we, he had just uh, run past there on his escape from Beast, certainly coming in handy. Very nice. But let's, let's talk about Dengdemore executions for just a moment. Because that scissors... And you stand right there, and they cut you in half. Thought it was just going to be like a head snippy execution. Bad enough. But cutting you in half, starting... No! That's just, that's just wrong! No! Anyway, um... But that whole scene, perfectly... This was my alternate scene of the week, I have to be perfectly honest. But just because it was so much fun. Loved having the Rowdy Three, of course, show up. Uh, loved their battle and attack. Loved the whole Killam Knight helmets they're using as extra big, almost Hulk fists was awesome. Uh, Mama Degnamore, certainly a pain in the butt. Loved that Dirk was the executioner to pull out. I mean, it was just, it was a perfectly done bit. And then, of course, we have Cyrus uh, showing up and his first introduction to Dirk, though he doesn't know it at the moment. Um, great scissors fights all around with Cyrus's buddy fighting Martin in the Rowdy Three versus Dirk, who again, hero mode this episode, uh, was just beautiful. I also love the idea he thought that just by first blood that was the end of the fight. Just got the nick and that was going to be it. That's not really, that's duels, it's not battle Dirk, and that has to be agreed upon. Anyway, uh, was just, was a great scene full of joy, full of excitement, and now we have the whole group together so we can have our official big detective speech. Requisite for any detective drama is you have to have the final speech that sums up the whole case. Now, of course, we did get a good insight into that from the beginning of the episode, and I like how they have peppered that throughout these last few episodes, showing us little bits and moments uh, of the Cardenas family and what eventually happened that sad night 50 years ago. Um, there's not really much more to cover it up. Dirk laid it out very clearly and concisely and beautifully. Uh, thought that was just great. And I love, again, the Rowdy Three is like, yeah, it sounds like the same stuff that the English voicey weird guy is gonna say anyway. So I don't know what you're saying, but I'm right with you. Uh, just <laughs> uh, loving it was great. Really got our full on summation of, of where everybody is how everything is connected, and what needs to be done. We need Amanda to pull out uh, uh, Project Moloch, the young boy, and bring back to Dengdemore to wake him up so we can save the whole, save the whole place. Or Wendemore, sorry, not Dengdemore. That's the family. Uh, Wendemore's the place. Uh, only downside, of course, is the sudden appearance of Susie, who has already tapped into Wakti's little pool and a very frightening, scary speech, and bleeding blood from the eyes. Nasty. Uh, and now, I'm assuming just overheard everything that was said. It's going to be a bit of a standoff. Uh, and I'm really hoping some paribulitis is about to be manifest really, really soon. Meanwhile, back on Earth, we have Tina and Farah having a little bit of investigative work themselves. Uh, one love, Tina. Just blind firing there in the police station. I'm an officer! Not really acting like one, but it makes sense. She just took the job to be with her friend Hobbs, and now she just wants him back. And that's, that's where we get a lot of emotion from this scene. I have to say, 
when they finally get over to Susie's house and they discover Bob there in the whole freaky, not plugged in TV video hypno land going on, we got to see really some depth out of Tina. I mean, she's been a fun character, no doubt. Really, really just getting a, a really appreciate her. Very funny. But here we get to step away from that, that funniness a moment where we get to see really the depth, uh, the emotional humanity from Tina. And I love whenever we get a chance to see something new from a character that we haven't seen, that, that type of depth. Uh, using uh, tequila talk, <laughs> one grunt means yes, no grunts mean no, uh, was perfect. Again, very human, just connecting. Just tell me where my friend Hobbs is. The fact that Hobbs is alive is awesome. Really warms my heart. I love Hobbs. So I'm, I'm glad that he's not dead. Um, and they can find him down there, Quarry, assuming, of course, escaping the little curse thing. And I thought that was kind of a cool idea. I'm guessing a, a curse being a trap. So if you try to move Bob or interfere, then the video just says, you know, go and kill. I don't think that that was actually Mage popping through the TV from where he was in the courier part. I think that that was like a spell, a pre-recorded type kind of thing. Go and mess with them, and then the spell will order Bob to stop and kill you. Um, do appreciate Farrah blowing up the TV and not Bob. She didn't want to kill Bob, and also, look, Bob may not be a great person, but he's already been magicked and messed up, and there's already enough going on with him. Maybe give him some time. Uh, but they do find out that Hobbs did the quarry, which is awesome. Really appreciate the escape, the uh, rescue attempt right there. Not quite so successful as Dirks and the Ratty Threes, however. Um, problem with going up against Mage, uh, which I am sure that, speaking of Dirk and company are about to find out going against Susie, is Magic's very tricky to go against. And they have a way of sneaking up on you and behind you and magic wanting you in the back and taking you out. So, didn't kill. It was the last line. We're going to have fun together. It does seem to imply that they're still going to be alive. And from the sneak preview for yes, next week, yes, we see that they are. Uh, but, at least they are with Hobbs. Hopefully, they will be able to knock him out of whatever magic spell that he is under. Uh, and then they can capture Mage and just sort of wrap things up on their end. I mean, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? And of course, we can't finish an episode review without talking about Ken. Ken, who is now pretty much in charge of Blackwing, it seems. Certainly the person Priest prefers to uh, uh, deal with. Uh, that Priest has already figured out the whole house and they've caught the Purple People Eater is awesome. Also that the Purple People Eater song is playing inside the crate. I'm not sure if the Beast is projecting that song or what because he hit the button the music went out and then it seemed like the beast got shot so i don't really know the connection i just like the fact that it was there uh but yeah ken's definitely definitely the new the new head of blackwing he's got a suit on and everything um cluing things in with hugo i love hugo's just you got a feel for him he just he really has no clue of what's going on uh, it's really responsive Stop trying to get me to read! <laughs> it's just, it's so perfect for him. Uh, but we do get our little clue in here for Mona Wilding, aka Project uh, Lumia. Uh, and that she not only can shapeshift, but she actually becomes what she turns into. I love the, also the idea that she was a chair for six years when she was brought in. Uh, but yes, yeah, she was definitely the little squeezy toy. Uh, which we all pretty much saw from, from episode one. But yeah, so she's the squeezy toy. Don't really know a whole lot more. We know that she was Wakti's connection um, uh, into Project Blackwing, so she still may be around. I don't know if she's still going to be that squeezy, uh, uh, squeezy thing. But uh, I just I love the idea of Ken being the one with all of the knowledge now, that he is educating... Uh, Hugo, and everyone of what's going on in Project Blackwing. I don't think that he is going to be like Blackwing material. I think he's here for a mission and to kind of take care of what needs to be taken care of. I don't think he is selling out to Blackwing. So I think as soon as maybe Bart shows up, we might have a little bit of split. But then we would have a Ken with full knowledge of everything that's going on with Blackwing. 
which is just awesome. All right, just a couple of small bits. Uh, one, Murdery Acid Trip Renfair Nightmare. That is such an excellent description of what's going on in Wendemore from Todd's perspective. I couldn't have said it better myself. And from a Todd quote to an Amanda quote, uh, we're still not okay, and now we've been captured by cartoon people in an alternate dimension. Again, also a very succinct way of putting things. Uh, and, and speaking of that, the rest of that particular scene there where she just talks to uh, Todd about normality, Todd wanting to go back to a normal life, how could you do that? After these past two seasons, is there any possibility that he could go back to working at the hotel? No. No, there is not. And more importantly, why would you want to? Hugo is very happy when he understands something. Sure, he doesn't like to read and doesn't understand how you can convey knowledge that way. But when he does get something, very happy. So the most secure place in Blackwing is the cab Ken was held in. All right. Oh, and the uh, dunce caps on our condemned Todd and Amanda on their execution. Yeah, that perfectly childish. All right, so Dirk, Todd, Amanda, the Rowdy Three, and Cyrus are all united, and unfortunately, Susie is right behind them. But we've got a couple of uh, we've got a couple of loose cannons floating around there. One, of course, Bart and Ponto together have they crossed over into uh, Wendemore, or are they going to be helping uh, perhaps Tina and Farah out with their whole mage problem? We'll have to see which way they go. Also curious, Rebulitis attack. Now that we've got Amanda and Todd, we get some double Rebulitis, maybe some lightning stuff happening. Don't know. That would make for a super cool scene to see. And of course, we've got the Rowdy Three, who is always just a butt-kicking quadro. There's four of them now, right? All right, so... Anyway, two episodes left. Things will be wrapping up soon. Got to get Project Moloch. Got to get him back to Wendemore to wrap things up. But you know, it is not going to go easy. I can't wait to see how it all falls out. So, thank you so much for joining me with this review. And if you enjoyed it, would appreciate a hit on that like button. Thoughts, ideas, comments, what's going on in your brains? Throw those down in the section Below, what do you think about this episode? How do you think things gonna wrap up? And what do you think? Double pararibulitis attack on uh, on Susie? Yeah, I think it'll be a good time. Anyway, your thoughts? Throw those down in the section below. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Darren Jakes. Now, if you're not a subscriber, please join us. I know there's only two of these episodes left, but we just started Agents of Shield, and next year we're gonna be doing Legion, American Gods when it comes back. Uh, plus, still waiting for Season 2 of Westworld. Lots of stuff. Don't miss any of it. You won't if you're a subscriber. Do so by clicking my face right here. And I'll go ahead and throw up our latest couple of reviews right here, and you can check those out. So, again, thanks so much for joining me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.